Hey guys, this is Brian, and today I want to share with you something pretty cool. There was somebody who reached out to me back a year ago in May 2019, and then basically after talking with him and just going over with some of the tips and just things that I generally share on my feed anyway, he was able to turn it around, and we're going to see how. But more importantly, I just wanted to share what were the things that I said to him and just revisit that for you guys and explain it a little bit more in depth if possible, just so you can get a sense of maybe this is something you can do too. So he starts off by saying, hey Brian, I took a decent loss last week due to stubbornness to cut losses. Sometimes I get so stupid and just fail to pull the cut losses trigger, letting a small loss turn into a big one. May I ask you, what's your take on this? How did you practice and improve your discipline on cutting your minus one R once it has reached? I said, uh, sorry, it happens to us all. There are so many things that go into this, but I'll, you know, here's some things to consider. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't read ver verbatim, but here it is. So, was your stop too tight? Number one, what a lot of people try to do is because they want to make a lot of money is they'll put a large position size without really considering um, the range of the stock. And they're basically going in with this kind of scalping mentality which is nothing wrong with that but at the same time like it puts you up for a lot of risk if you're not very careful and clearly from his initial question he pretty much said that he sometimes lets those small losses turn to big ones and having discipline is very very important in terms of scalping because you want to in order to keep your losses smaller than your winners that means your losses need to be cut extremely tight and so in this case that's probably the first thing that I would would think when it comes down to this because uh, if you pick like a good risk level and your stop is you know in a reasonable area then you know you should be able to cut that with no problem but of course it goes deeper than that and of course it happens more often than not where sometimes you have emotional lapses or judgment lapse and then it can cascade on itself but let's see are you risking more than you're comfortable with so that's the second question is that is it a money problem? So a lot of times when people can't cut the risk, it has come down, it comes down to their attachment to money. And so in that case, if you're trying to practice trading and scale that up into your business, what you want to do is you want to, you know, not do it for your ego, but reduce your risk on the loss to something that you can accept every time. You know, if, if 10, $15 is meaningless to you, then you know, it's better to practice with that mindset and with that risk before moving forward. I said, you should be carefree if you lose the amount you're risking. So it's basically coming down to acceptance at that point. And I think what a lot of people forget about in trading is that um, it, it scales up very quickly. And so once you prove to yourself over time and gain the experience that you can do it, that's more important. It's just the process of, of trading. It's not about any single day or anything like that. Okay, and then I asked him, did you have a max loss with your broker to disallow you to add and turn to a bigger loser? So this is another thing that, you know, surprisingly for how much I mention it, is not really considered or implemented by a lot of people because what happens is people, they say like, oh, I'm, you know, they don't like playing with these risk parameters because uh, Maybe they actually break the rules intraday where like they're going above and beyond what they're willing to lose on the day, but they kind of fight their way out. And so they lose that kind of shield where it's like, oh, I'm not going to end the day red. I'm just going to find my way back to break even or small green or something like that. And because if you do that enough times, you're going to kind of use that as a crutch instead of accepting the actual problem with your trading. The other thing is that max losses, of course, I've beaten that horse to death, but it's going to inevitably, it's going to keep you from that inevitable emotional mistake that we all make, which is where you don't cut your loss or you get in too big or something like this, where you fight a stock and having that extra layer of protection to just kind of stop you from trading. That's a must in my opinion. And so I always recommend at least when you're shorting, um, at all, you, because your losses are unlimited, you definitely want to keep that max loss in place or have a broker who has that capability. And I said, uh, do you know what an equity curve looks like where you have a positive expectancy with risk reward? 
I post the picture below and I will get to that in a second. And then um, go on to say how to scale in. I said, so I said, I always suggest starting out with a wide risk so you have no fear to put the trade on. And then as soon as I put on the trade, um, I exit immediately in level two and, oh, sorry. I put my exit immediately in the level two and then I have the order loaded. So it's basically like I'm ready to cut my loss immediately or use a hard stop, one or the other. You should know where you're gonna cut the trade before you enter. Therefore, once you enter, you should immediately load your level two up and just be ready to go. And then let's see. And I basically said the same thing I said earlier, just reduce your risk to the amount you can tolerate losing. And this was a year ago, so my opinion changed at hard stop, so I'm gonna elaborate on that more. But um, I said basically hard stops can help you as well. You may experience slippage here and there, but the discipline comes, sometimes uh, it's nice if you take it out of your own hands. And so back then I was having a lot of slippage on my stops, and I think it's because I was using them with the market stop. But these days I've been using limit with like, I try to give myself a buffer because I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to have a bit of slippage. So like, you know, three, five, 10 cents, whatever it is. Depends on the range of the stock, but you know, you get what I mean. And that actually helps limit it a lot more because uh, when I was market stopping, it was really easy to get tagged and just filled at any price. So like sometimes when I expected to lose one R or even 1.2 R or something like that with slippage, sometimes I would lose like two. So it was kind of getting to the point where I just didn't trust anymore. Uh, these days I actually use hard stops all the time and there's pretty much no reason not to be using them. Um, especially if you're gonna be managing really fast paced trades and if you have many trades on at the same time, it does help a lot to ease your mind knowing that it's out of your hands. Cause even now after a year later from this point, uh, when I put my hard stop out, like sometimes I tell myself, like, oh, I want to cut it here, but I can feel like emotionally, like I don't want to cut it. And so by having the hard stop in, it really helps deal with that and curb that sensation. So that I can just say like, okay, it's out of my hands. Uh, let's see. Basically I told him to do have max loss to the broker. Um, have a position loss and a daily loss if possible. So I'm not sure what all brokers have, but for me, I can set one where it's like, oh, I lose minus two R on a ticker. And then on the daily loss, I lose like minus four or something. That, that's what it used to be. And so that way, even if I, you know, have a bad day on one ticker, I can still trade something else where I have my position. And that way I, I you know, it's more insulated because if there's one ticker that's kind of going against me and I'm trying to fight it and fight it and fight it, this really helps. And usually the other, the other ticker, um, if it's not a loss, then it usually bails me out of the other position because of the way the risk reward works. So in that case, like if you have three to one risk reward, right? Then like at max, you want to risk three R uh, per position. So. The reason for that is because if you, you know, if you t nail one trade at three to one, then you're going to wipe out all of those losses, right? So at least you go break even. Uh, I even recommend like minus two, to be honest, because what happens is y if you're minus three R and you have a three to one expectancy or risk reward, average risk reward, then when you lose, you're not always going to recover three. You might end up losing like with slippage, with fees, with locates, you might end up being like minus 3.5, minus four or something like that. So technically you're not always able to go break even. And that's not even the place you want to be anyway. Um, it's, I always recommend it to be like, Hey, let's just work on our accuracy. Like take the L for the day, analyze why you got to minus three, because at three to one risk reward, it shouldn't be harder to have a 50% win rate. Uh, with a little bit of a wider stop. So in my opinion, you shouldn't be losing three on a ticker that, you know, that you feel as a high odds and has an edge, right? 
And that way you're always going to be like minimizing your overall losses. And every time you win, you take two steps forward instead of two steps forward and, you know, three steps back. So you're always like inching ahead. And that is what leads to consistent profitability. Uh, and then for the daily loss, you're going to want to consider like, hey, how many trades do I take on average? So you, obviously some days you're going to trade like two tickers. Some days you might take three or four. Um, you just have to figure out for yourself, like, how many tickers am I trading simultaneously, generally, or per day? And then just put your average and then combine that with the position loss. So in the previous example, if I have minus 2R per ticker and I'm trading three tickers a day, then I'll have a minus 6R on the max loss for the day. Okay? And... That is kind of the methodology you can scale up as your risk reward goes higher and higher and higher. Okay. I said, we all make mistakes here and there. It's always going to happen to us because of our emotions, but to limit is the key. And that's where the max losses are. You never want to kill your counter. Too bad trades. Again. You will overcome a minus two, minus three, minus four R loss if you have good enough risk reward and time. So... What I always like to do is think of like my max losses on a grander scale. So let's say, let's use the same example from before. If you have minus six R on a daily, it's probably gonna be like minus seven with fees, locates and all that. So you plan for minus six, but you get minus seven, okay? And you have to think to yourself, like what is my worst case scenario? So let's say like, for some reason you couldn't cut the loss, you took a minus, 9R day, okay, with everything combined. How many trades will it take to recover that? Well, if you won every trade with 3 to 1, it's 3 trades. And so that helps the mentality for a lot of people of like knowing how they can recover from a slump because you can quantify like, hey, if I'm generally hitting this benchmark for my R, then now I know how to get out. Whereas like a lot of times when people don't think of risk reward, um, their losses can kind of seem insurmountable because they're always climbing, but it's so difficult to come out of that situation where like if you were down minus 10 R and you're always making one to one trades, like it would take you a really long time, especially if you lose while trying to recover that. So you can kind of like keep furthering the, the gap between you and your break even, thus increasing your drawdown. Okay. Um, I said I had to climb out big holes before to stay persistent and learn from the stakes. Um, so I said wide stop to start, add to a winner when confirmed. But that's not to say that your um, your confirmation should be really far away from where you start. Because what a wide stop starter kind of suggests to people is that it's okay to... Uh, just kind of throw it out there willy-nilly. No, your your stop or your entry should be where you think it's going to go in your favor. And then you add once it like confirms that. So that, that can be seconds to a couple candles, but it shouldn't be too too long because uh, you know, there's a concept of MAE and MFE. And you probably want to Google that. Um, MA is the one I was going to talk about. It's max adverse excursion, which means like once you put on the trade, how far does the price go against you? And so basically if your starter is always getting stopped out, then that means you need to work on your starter, making it more systematic or having a better entry trigger slash signal and not about just putting on a starter willy-nilly and using that as an excuse. Because here's the other thing about trading is that you almost never, well, I'm going to say never, and I wouldn't do it personally, is you never want to add to a loser. And so if you put on a starter with a wide stop and it goes against you, but because your stop's so wide, like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop out of this trade because it's still working for me then you can't add at that better price. It's much better for you to just cut the trade, add or restart at that better price. And then once it works, add in. That'll help you a lot with just 
not letting things go against you and hopefully that helps explain the mentality where you're not just using it as an excuse it should be very accurate if it's not back test it figure it out okay and then i said uh, reiterating riskless money if that's your problem try hard stops uh, it's a lot more important to have the losses remain in the same area and then work on your winners while you're practicing the stop so the thing about risk reward is like when you take minus one R loss consistently and even with having that starter with like sometimes it's minus 0.5 or 0.3 something really small um that helps you because your win if your winner is always three then it's easy to overcome a loss like that like your average risk reward kind of uh, works out more in your favor whereas like you know if you have a three or like average gain and your average loser is like 0.8 i'm not really good at math but you're gonna have more than three to one risk reward um, as a whole pretty much because your losers are smaller however if your average winner is three right and your average loser is like 1.2 then you're not actually a three to one trader like if you trade that over 100 trades or something like that and so you have to keep that in mind like there's a other ways to skew it in your favor to get the same result. So smaller losers is very important. Um, one trade will not define you. And one trade against your system means nothing. Take the long-term approach. So this is where I link him to the, the chart that I was explaining, which is like, if he trades over hundred trades at three to one with 50% win rates, then he can have a pretty tremendous gain, right? Um, from wherever he's starting at. Uh, that's not the point of the gain. It's not a point about the money. It's a point of you're on a consistent uptrend, okay? And it also helps you visualize like what your drawdown should look like. Of course, whenever it comes to equity curve sims, you always want to say like, hey, uh, this is me trading perfectly. So of course there's going to be fees. There's going to be emotional errors, stuff like that. So the more you can boost your stats like win rate or average win or reduce your loss the smoother it's going to be but you know there the not pictured here is like i've talked with traders where we we go over their stats and it's like they have like one to one or two to one uh and we simulate over the 100 trades or whatever and they're not even break even which is kind of sad or if they're if they're green it's very small so again like with the perfection example or ideas like you're not going to be perfect so you're undoubtedly going to do worse than what you see therefore why not adjust your like risk reward ratio focus on that so that you can get the profitability you want like a lot of times it's a ego satisfaction thing or it's like i have to be right i have to win but in trading it's you're going to lose no matter what some people are better at losing nothing and some people like me are more comfortable risking a set amount of money and sticking to my plan and that's what got me here okay and then um so he followed up here thank you so much for your insights i do think i keep my stops quite tight most of the time and many times i wouldn't cut it after i hit my stop i let it test around and hold a little longer then the small loss gets bigger and bigger i don't know why sometimes i just couldn't accept the loss okay so exactly this you need to consider the fact that there's a lot of range on the ticker especially nowadays it's very volatile right lots of volume huge percentage moves um you know if if you want to take a risk reward approach it's far easier if you consider the range of the tickers and not try to take just such a small piece of the move because of course if you want to get three to one on you know like a and within five minutes like you're gonna have to put on very tight risk and that's that can be very difficult because once once it gets away from you you're gonna lose money at a very exponential parabolic rate because your risk is so tight so you know on one hand you can put hard stop so that you don't have to think about it and just you know boom there you go uh and on the other hand you can accept that you may want to take advantage of more range so you have more room to let it test and work and I don't recommend 
letting stops get hit and then hold and just see how it bounces because a lot of times like that's going to get you in serious trouble because what's going to happen is you're going to be in that like fight flight or freeze mode and a lot of times people become very fearful at that moment and it's hard to execute when you're not thinking clearly it's better to lay your plan out and then just like not even have an excuse just cut it at any cost because like i said you want to keep your losses consistent that's very very important if your losses are all over the place you're you're you have no way to predict like how you're going to do um with math with equity curve sims and that's really the, the most important part is that you can you can idealize you can visualize like where, where you want to be in a series of trades so that you you understand like this is what i'm doing it for this is the light at the end of the tunnel and honestly i think that just use hard stops like if you have a problem with it then it's most likely having to do with your um you need to work on your execution like your plan may be off have a wider stop than what you have currently so that you don't have your stop getting tested and just work with that because if your stop is getting tested all the time that means something about your entry something about your risk is off and work on that because that's going to give you more uh long-term results okay so we can see how how choppy his chart was here a lot of drawdowns a lot of you know who knows if it will be back to zero um in a couple of trades compared to the nice clean uptrend here right okay so i said uh you're on the uptrend just trying to encourage him and it's all about controlling the losses right so let me know how how it goes okay so now here's the cool part so this is the part this is why i started the video is this guy actually got back to me one year later so this is july 2020 and he says hey brian it's been a year since i spoke to you last time hope you're doing well your insights were super helpful especially about broker set max loss thank you again for that today i came to give you a little update about my progress and a few questions 2019 has been a struggle and grind for me ended the year roughly break even 2020 started slow but i slowly grinded to the upside below my profit chart for the year and i was really proud of him because i was like wow congratulations you know this is someone i talked to a year ago and he put the things I said into practice and now was able to translate that to profitability. And that's amazing. And you can see that he's even doing better than the chart I posted. It's more of a parabolic curve. And maybe that could be due to the fact that he's number one, getting better as a trader, but also number two, I tried to share a lot of the tactics and strategies that I'm using. Um, in my blogs, I've outlined like everything that I've basically been working on and then subsequently accomplished. Like a lot of the things I said there, like in part one, I applied that. And in part two, I realized it. Part two, I said, maybe I should do this. And part three, I did it. And then part three, I said some stuff and et cetera. So now I've, I've kind of met a lot of the goals that I want to reach in terms of uh, executing those plans. And... You can see how that chart's really similar to the charts that like I post sometimes about my equity curve, which is it's like literally straight up. And that's the power of risk rewards. Like you can really, really hamper your drawdowns by, you know, having a good risk reward plan. Even right now I have like 25, 30 percent win rate, which is nothing, but my average risk reward is very high. And so I can have a very low win rate and be consistently profitable. And that's kind of to me, that's kind of an easier place to be, which is a little bit paradoxical. Of course, like you have to stick to your plan, but once you do, it's very, very rewarding because you can make so many mistakes. You can have an off day. You could be emotional. You could, uh, you know, I've had some pretty bad days and I've been able to, to claw my way out of that. And you could see kind of like in some of his peaks and valleys, like he did have that dip. But the nice thing there is that when you, when you draw down, it's very, very controlled. And I think probably you know that's a very sharp pullback so probably what's helping him there is really that max loss and that actually changes the game for a lot of people so i hope you guys enjoyed i know i rambled a lot but there's no other way for me to do this um, other than just saying my thoughts and uh 
you know, if you have any questions, just ask me the links to my blog, to my Twitter and everything else is just going to be in the, in the comment section below and yeah, happy trading everybody.